Hi everyone, this is Ben with Dream Factory. In this short video, I will show you how to connect to a caching service. In this example, Redis, it works the same way for Memcached and the local cache service in Dream Factory as well. So to get started, make sure that you have Dream Factory installed. Uh, here I have it installed locally. There are a bunch of install options. You can go to bitnami.com and get a local installer or a cloud installer or go straight to GitHub, check our website, dreamfactory.com, for all the install options, or bitnami.com, and search for Dream Factory. So to get started, what you'll do is you'll just head over to Services in the Admin Console, and there's a service type now for cache. So you'll select either Local Cache, Memcached, or Redis, and I'm going to show the setup for Redis. Very straightforward, you give the API a name. This is what will be used when you make API calls, so here I have Redis. A label so you can view it in the user interface and an optional description so you know what it is make sure that active is checked and then set up your config so some of these will be set by default the host put in a host name where your redis or memcached uh, service is actually running your port number uh, things like the database index you can leave that to zero and then things like the default time to live you need to specify that as well as any other options. I'll point everyone to a blog post where you can see the various options and it's in our documentation, but anything that you want to control in terms of how you're accessing the cache service in terms of the settings, you can put in here as key value pairs. So once you've done that, you will have an auto-generated API for Redis or Memcached or your local caching service. So here you can check out Redis. And in terms of use cases, there are a couple really uh, important ones that I want to explain. So one here is you can just basically post and update and delete and get key value pairs, which in and of itself can be useful just, you know, reading and writing from the cache. Uh, and the way you do that is just very simple. You can open any of these and browse and see how they work. So to post key value pair, you can see an example, put in your key, put in your value, and just post that. It's very simple. And then things like get, you can retrieve. So if I created, you know, a key like Let's say name, which I've already posted, and then go ahead and try that out, and then it will show you the uh, value coming back, and it shows you the curl request with the API key and the session token, the request URL here, uh, and then you should see a successful response coming back. Uh, if you don't see a successful response, make sure that you've started Redis, so like if you're running locally, You'll want to make sure that you've, here on a Mac, I've, I've started the service using Brew, so make sure that Redis is actually running or memcached, uh, otherwise you'll get errors back from the API. Now what's really powerful about this, in addition to just being able to read and write from the cache, is to use the API in server-side scripting. So what that means is uh, Dream Factory has now exposed the caching as a first-class service. So all of the other features of Dream Factory, including server-side scripting on your API endpoints, role-based access control, lookup keys, all of the security features are now uh, available to the caching services. And so with, with server-side scripting, this is where things like Redis will typically be used. Um, server-side scripting is really a, a stateless thing. It's very event-driven. Uh, Dream Factory now has queued events, uh, but sometimes you'll want to have data that persists in the cache. And you can then call that data and operate on that data in the cache using server-side scripting. So all of the endpoints for the cache services, the REST endpoints, are scriptable. And so that's the, kind of the most uh, important use case uh, for things like Redis. Just wanted to point that out uh, in terms of usage. So that's about it for this demo very quick. Uh, for more details on Redis specifically, you can head on over to our blog and there's a post uh, from September 6, 2016 about the caching services. It goes into some details about what I kind of described in this video, pretty brief, but it also links you to the documentation. And here's a lot more detail. So if you go to the features section, scroll down the side here, there's a whole section here on cache services. And when you click on that, you'll get a lot more technical detail on both configuration as well as uh, kind of what's available in terms of the API. So that's about it. Hopefully this is helpful and gives you a little bit of context about caching in Dream Factory. And that's it. Thanks a lot.